Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks to my friend, uh, James Langford, for um, his role today um, as the ranking member. Um, there was a little discussion earlier about crime, and there is a crime wave in D.C., as you know, and it's not uh, only in D.C., it's happening around the country, particularly in some of our bigger urban centers. According to the crime statistics, assaults with dangerous weapons, homicides, and armed robberies are all on the rise. Uh, armed robberies were actually uh, up 22% from last year. So 22% increase in armed robberies this year as compared to last year. And, uh, and last year was a concerning year, as you know. Um, the DC chief of police has recently criticized the DC court system for contributing to the rise in crime, accusing the court system of allowing criminals to roam free. And uh, I can, I can, Give you a citation to that, but that was that was uh, that was his concern. To our D.C. Superior Court candidates here, our nominees um, in particular, what can the court system do to address this crime wave and to um, avoid what the chief of police uh, at least uh, believes is part of the problem? And and what other ways would you recommend that the court work better with the prosecutors and with law enforcement uh, to reduce crime? So, Senator, this is uh, Sean Staples. Oh. I'm sorry, I don't know what order we were supposed to go in. Excellent. I'll let um, you go first. Since you started uh, talking, that's great. But I'd think, love to hear from all three of you. Thank you. I, I, I think the court um, and all of its partners um, in the criminal justice system are uh, acutely concerned about uh, the rise in violent crime. Um, but I can tell you, as a sitting judge, um, we have to look at these cases very, very carefully. Um, and decide them as fairly and as impartially as we can. Um, we have a, uh, a Criminal Justice uh, Act committee, uh, the C-10 committee, that meets um, twice a month that discusses the operations of the C-10 courtroom that includes all of our partners from the U.S. Attorney's Office, from the uh, Attorney General's Office, from the Pretrial Services Agency, from MPD, and from the Department of Corrections. Um, and that discusses how that court functions appropriately. Uh, but the bottom line for me as a judicial officer is to look at these cases very carefully and decide them on a case-by-case -case basis as carefully as I can. Others? I'm happy to Ms. start. Lopez? Oh. Oh. Um, Sorry. Um, go ahead, Judge Lopez. Yeah, so I agree with Judge Staples. Um, I, I believe the court does um, have a good track record of working with stakeholders. Um, they're in every committee of the court, including those in the criminal uh, division. And um, the, the way that the, that we can address that issue is to, to, again, roll up our sleeves, get to work, rule on our cases expeditiously um, and in a fair and impartial manner um, while actually working with our stakeholders to improve the administration of justice, which we aim to do on a regular basis. Um, but I. I, I do agree that the court is um, actively working on that. I think COVID um, has provided us an opportunity to kind of do a wholesale uh, approach of, of a review of all of our operations. Um, and we have been doing that, um, you know, to, to kind of figure out what's the best way to go forward in terms of, um, of using the technologies and, and, and those conversations are in play about how we can, um, expeditiously, um, you know, uh, deal with the cases that are before us. Unfortunately, the judge's role is very limited in the cases that it sees. Um, and so our, our work is just to make sure that those cases are heard um, quickly and expeditiously and, um, and that we have certain trial dates, which uh, we are working on and, and continue to work with our partners to make sure um, that we are doing the best that we can within our confines to address the issues. Thank you, Senator. Good uh, thank you, Senator. Um, I echo the sentiments of my co my colleague, my fellow nominees. Uh, as a judge, I believe it is most important that we faithfully apply the law, the statutes created by DC Council, 
the law created by the DC Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court and do that as faithfully as we can to each set of facts that come before us and to ensure that it is fairly and impartially and consistently applied. And I also agree with uh, my fellow nominee statements that keeping open lines of communication with stakeholders, MPD, the defense office, the prosecutor's office, um, and evaluating operationally how the court is functioning and what we can do to help address this is also appropriate. Well, those those answers are fine. I guess what I didn't hear in any of the answers is um, that you have any new ideas to deal with the crime wave, uh, except that you'll apply the law fairly and, and expeditiously as possible. Uh, and by the way, the backlog, as we've talked about earlier, is a huge issue too. The mayor has uh, talked about that. Um, she has criticized you guys because she cited it as a public safety concern um, in terms of the, the backlog. I say you guys, I mean uh, the DC court system. Um, so let me just ask a more general question. Are you concerned about crime in DC? And is that something where as a judge, you feel like, you know, you have a role to think about sentencing and think about, um, you know, how to how to deal with it. Um, it there's obviously been not just uh, increased crime, but also, uh, you know, increased uh, drug use and drug overdoses and drug overdose deaths. Um, uh, the the issue of illegality is is one that has has grown and um, I think the courts do have a role to play here, not not just to apply the law fairly, but to uh, to look at this from a, a different perspective, perhaps. So let me just ask you that generally, are, are you concerned about the, the crime wave and do you think the court has a role to play? So uh, I will start again. And, uh, I think um, Mr. Staples, I think we'll, 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 we'll start with you because you started before. Thank you. Um, I think, um, as I said, all of the agencies that work in this in this criminal justice sphere are concerned about crime. Um, but uh, in terms of, um, I think often uh, as a judicial officer to discuss um, these issues often wades into policy concerns about what we do about them, uh, what we do about uh, the issues regarding crime. Um, and, and I do believe it's my role, it's, it's really just to, to, to listen and to, not to really focus, however, and listen to the cases that are before me with, with a heightened focus um, to be able to deal with these issues effectively. Okay. Yes. Well, my, my, my time's about expired, but I would just refer you to the concerns of the DC chief of police and the mayor of DC, uh, both of whom talk about one, the mayor talking about public safety, given your backlog and the concern about getting, you know, the bad, uh, the, the bad people off the streets. And then the chief of police talking about the, uh, the, the court system too often letting criminals roam free. I hope that, um, uh, should you all be successful in your confirmations that you will consider those concerns and uh, consider your responsibility in trying to address those. So thank you, Mr. Chairman.